I'm Gemma and this is Nonfic Books and today I have my TBR for Nonfiction November 2015 as well as a few nonfiction recommendations. Nonfiction November 2015 is a reading challenge I'm doing with the lovely Olive over at Book Olive and it's us trying to get more people reading a little bit more non-fiction in November because who doesn't love some alliteration. There's four categories which are history, science and nature, culture and society and biography and memoir and we're trying to encourage people to aim for four non-fiction books in November. Obviously it totally depends on the time you have. If you can even just pick up one non-fiction book in November that would be fantastic because I really I'm a big supporter of this genre and I really wish more people would pick up the books but I've got absolutely tons to talk about so I'm going to crack on. A couple of suggestions for history. Alison Weir's The Six Wives of Henry VIII. This is a little bit old now, but it's absolutely wonderful, and she's bringing out an updated version, because I think this is around 20 years old now, including a bit more modern research relatively soon, and I think it'd be absolutely fascinating to read this book first, which is absolutely wonderful, and then pick up her newer one. Helen Castor is one of my favourite historians. Absolutely love her, raved about her before, but really recommend She Wolves, which is looking at the women who ruled England before Elizabeth. Absolutely fascinating. Then moving on to culture and society, Daniel Klein's Travels with Epicurus, which is a which are meditations on getting older and whether or not you actually lose something if you try and ignore old age, because historically old age has been something that has been celebrated and enjoyed as a sort of culmination and the epic end to a wonderful life. And it's absolutely wonderful. I think anyone of any age would get something out of that. And the last one for culture and society, Debra Yaff's Among the Jainites. This is very, very funny. It's all about Jainite, J- yeah, Jainite culture, how everyone who is in this sort of mad love of Jane Austen can go a little bit over the overboard, really. Um, some of these people are absolute wonderful eccentrics, and I love reading about people like that. It's not a perfect book, but it's a really, really enjoyable one, and I do recommend picking it up. And for science and nature, I've got two quite different ones. Simon Singh, Big Bang. And this was published in 2004, so for a science book, that's a relatively long time ago. So some of the details are a little bit out of date, but Simon Singh makes both science and maths very accessible, and I recommend reading anything he's got. And this is a really good sort of starter's guide to the Big Bang. Helen Scales is a really interesting marine biologist, and Spirals in Time looks at the life and afterlife of seashells. It's a bit like short stories, really. Each chapter can totally be read independently, and I don't think you need to read it from beginning to end. I think you get a lot out of this. She doesn't dumb it down. It's really interesting, and it's also absolutely stunning. And last one, what's biography and memoir and biography? David Suchet's Poirot and Me. I've talked about this recently quite a lot. I absolutely love it. He's brilliant. It's got me totally obsessed about watching the Poirots. Absolutely magnificent. And the other one I really highly suggest is Agatha Christie's autobiography. But I've lent it out, so I don't have it here. But it is absolutely wonderful. So on to the books that I'm personally going to be reading. For history, I'm picking Lucy Moore's Anything Goes, biography of the Roaring Twenties. This is actually, and I didn't know this when I picked this up, about the Twenties in America, which is not something I know anything about, and I'm not sure I would have picked it up if I'd known, so it's good for me because I'll be pushing my boundaries a little bit by reading about a topic that I know nothing about, and it's not, I'm uninterested, but I certainly would have preferred it if it was a UK-based biography, so I'm looking forward to this because it's a little bit different for me. And then on to culture and society. Michael Booth's The Almost Nearly Perfect People, Behind the Myth of the Scandinavian Utopia. A few years ago, there was absolutely tons of books coming out about happiness in Denmark, Scandinavian countries being the happiest and most relaxed countries in the world. And I read quite a few of those, and this is sort of saying, whoa, 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 hang on, there's more to the story than that. And I'm looking forward to picking this up. For Science and Nature... I'm going to be continuing with The End of Night by Paul Bogard. I started this a couple of months ago, read a few chapters and then put it down. And I'm an absolute horror. If I put books down, even if they're brilliant, and pick up something else, I almost never go back to them. And this is one that I was enjoying and I really, really find the topic very interesting. So I'm determined to pick this up and reread it. And this is all about the sort of danger of artificial light throughout night time. 
how it's causing lots of problems for both animals and humans, and how actually it doesn't make us that much more secure, it's just we feel more secure than it actually making any stat statistical difference. So I really enjoyed it and I'm really looking forward to actually reading the whole thing properly. Finally, for history, Mary Lovell's biography of the Mitford Girls. Not history, this is, also, this is biography and memoir. And this is all about the Mitford sisters, I find them absolutely fascinating, but I've never actually sat down and read a whole sort of look at them closely. They're an amazing bunch of characters, and hopefully this has got, oh yes it does, lots of absolutely wonderful pictures as well. And oh, aren't they so glamorous? And I'm really looking forward to this. This is probably the one I'm looking forward to the most, because it is right up my alley. Um, and I've generally liked Mary Lovell's work before, so I might save this till last as a sort of reward for getting through the other books because um, I'm really really excited about picking this one up. So those are the books that I'm going to be reading and some of the books that I recommend. Obviously I review non-fiction books on here so if none of these strike you at all have a look back through some of the ones I've previously reviewed because there may well be a book that appeals to you a little bit more. If you're going to be partaking, and I really hope you are, please do leave a list down below of any books that you're either interested or you may well pick up. And if you've got any questions or comments, again, leave them down below. Hopefully see you in a video soon. Bye!